let, let me assure the people of Ghana that this matter is not over. This matter, we would pursue it to its logical conclusion and ensure that we we'll protect the interests of the nation. We did not even use the word fraud. The first person to use the word fraud is the supervising minister, the minister of energy, Mr. Peter Amewu, and even went to the extent of saying that that fraud vitiates the contract. The next person to use the word fraud... And when he was speaking about fraud, he was referring to al -Quds. The guarantee. Yes. He was referring to the guarantee. And his deputy even went forward to say that the whole process was a grand scheme to defraud the nation. So it is government, and I mean government officials, the minister, the cabinet minister, who, without anybody's prompting, came forward to tell the people. The findings show otherwise, though, conclusively, that there, was, there are no suggestions that, that is, there was any that attempt one. to commit a fraud. Number two, you see, this whole agreement, it is known as the ECG Financial and Operation Turnaround. So it's in two parts, financial and the technical aspects. And the financial aspect is important because ECG required a certain minimum capital injection per annum in order to make progress, in order to take it to a level that we all wanted to. That is why we went for that compact. Bear in mind it was compact one and compact two decided to put the whole of Compact 2 in the energy sector. And we needed a company with the financial capacity and the technical know-how to take over the assets of ECG in the form of a concession and turn it around. So that is the underlying principle. And I think that it's important that all this argument hinges on this very pivot, that we need a company with the financial capacity. And so the question is that, if you cast your mind, the back. money needed for that was provided by the compact. 500, no. 500 two, million. Apart from what the compact provides. For the purposes of this The thing. company itself is supposed to inject about $100 million per annum. Mm. So it's not just what the compact is providing. The compact provides a certain basis. Then you need a company that has the capital muscle to pump its money into that. And that is why PUSA has had to give them 23%. ROA. It's not done. It was about 18. They checked it to 23% because they expect you to inject a certain minimum amount of money into that. And so the first thing is that when you are pre-qualifying companies, you are pre-qualifying companies with a financial muscle and then two with a technical muscle. Now looking at even the FTI report itself, FTI International Group of US, if you look at their conclusions, number seven, mm. It is obvious that PDS did not have the financial muscle. They were supposed to put up a guarantee of 350 million. That guarantee, they could not meet that condition. It had to take the vice president of the Republic of Ghana to give instructions that water down the guarantee from an LC to an insurance guarantee. This is what our vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumina, did. When he realized that PDS did not have the financial muscle, and it's well captured in the FTA report, the third point, that they didn't have the financial muscle to raise the LC or a direct bank guarantee with a bank, he instructed that it should be watered down. I find that extremely problematic. And I think that the vice president did a great disservice to this country. He should have gone with what parliament approved, what was told to parliament and stuck to it. That is number one. Number two, what did PDS do? A so-called shareholder. I'm something you're a lawyer. If you look at the PDS structure, the shareholding structure are companies, not individuals. Go and check the shareholding structure of PDS. About four or five companies. It's supposed to be a consortium. I'm saying that if you look at the shareholding structure of PDS, whether you call it a consortium, a special purpose vehicle, or whatever, the shareholders are not individual human beings. The shareholders are companies. That's right. They can appoint people to represent them. I have no problem with that. So this whole idea that a particular person 
who is a shareholder of PDS. I want some clarity there. If you had said that maybe Santa Barbara, Energia, or whatever contributed one million, through Mr. Ayensu, I would appreciate that. But to say that a particular individual who is a shareholder of PDS is problematic for me. Mm. He contributed a loan amount or whatever cash injection of one million. Strictly speaking, PDS raised an amount of one million dollars throughout this process. What we are told is that another individual is supposed to have contracted seven million dollars of a loan from Car Bank. And as soon as they took over ECG, the first it's not few individual. days. Pardon? It's Santa Barra. No, I saw the name. I have the document. Okay. There's an individual there. Mm. I saw his name. I saw his name. I mean, I've read the whole 32 page document, including the government report and the correspondences. Mm -hmm. Immediately they took over, their first priority was to use prepayment monies to pay for this so called 7 million. And worst of all, the other 4.5 million that was taken directly from ECG customers' resources in terms of their monies to pay for that uh, 12.5 million. It tells you that, look, right from day one, they did not have the financial muscle. And so the question is that, what due diligence did we do in terms of their financial capability? And two, what was their equity contribution in terms of money? Because when you constitute a company or a consortium, you'd have con contributed some monies into that fund in order to proceed. Mm. So clearly, government officials were negligent on that aspect. On the 28th of February, bear in mind, on the 27th, PDS presented a guarantee. On the 28th, ECG was instructed to confirm. I have letters that ECG wrote to the Minister of Finance, cautioning the minister and stating that the guarantee was not fit for purpose. And we shall make this available during our press conference. ECG cautioned the Minister of Finance that please don't proceed. Because ECG also contracted the consultant, Hunton or Zay Hunton, yeah. to advise them. And they advised them that look, deal directly with the parent company and confirm the LC, the insurance, before you proceed. The minister did not take the advice of ECG and proceeded to confirm this so-called insurance guarantee. Now, like you said, if you read the report, now we're dealing with two reports. Yes. MIDA, which is a government agency, working under the office of the president, has commissioned a report or an investigation by FTI. The same government has commissioned another investigation. If you read the two reports, they conflict each other. That's a fact. Yeah, but is it they is conflict MIDA each other? Commissioned by the government of Ghana? Yes. MIDA or is commissioned. MCC. No, it's not commissioned MCC by has MCC. no interest. I'm saying in that MIDA, MIDA does in Ghana? is a creature no, of an fair. act of parliament. Yes, you are a member of parliament. Yes, but but uh, also uh, that my, brother, my brother, my brother, please, 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 go. please. I'll please. let you go. MIDA was established by an act of parliament. From MIDA. The court to the MCC. Please, what you are doing, you will not help. I will us. stop. You will not help. Go ahead. Stop. Yes. The MCC is a creature of the United States government. That represents the interest of the United States government. So there are interests. So there Why are not? Interests. All of us have interests. Exactly. Even me, has, uh, exactly. something has an interest. So the government the ordinary will not commission has an two interest. reports on its own. Commission two reports. Are you denying government. that MIDA did not so, commission so, so, that so report? So why we, can you let him make it? Yes, yes. No, so what is the issue? I don't say the issue here. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, the MIDA did not commission the government that he commissioned two reports. Yes, and that's a fact. How can the government commission two reports? So who commissioned the FTR report? And I'm saying there's an umbilical link to MCC. Look at the terminology is used to confuse. Mm. To confuse so Mr. please proceed. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. This is your umbilical table. We're we are listening to you. We are listening to you. Mm. MIDA uh, works at the office of the presidency. In fact, you have about nine cabinet ministers serving on that board. The chief executive was appointed by President Mahama. When President Kufado took over, they re relieved him and brought in Esam Benjamin. They changed the board chairman. And so MIDA cannot be a so-called umbilical cord of another creature. It's a creature of government. And so as to why government will commission an entity through its own agency to, commit, to constitute an investigation and then turn around and form another five-member committee, now with a conflicting report, is a major, major issue for all of us. 
Samson, I think that government must come out with this position immediately. Government itself gave us 30 days. This report, the report even from government, was ready as of 28th of August. Today is what? More than a week. Government cannot make a determination as to the way forward. And so clearly, Samson, some people slept on the job. Some people did a great disservice to this country. Mm. And I think that the Vice President, the Attorney General, the Minister of Finance, and the Minister of Energy have a lot of questions to answer in respect of this matter. I have identified some flaws, and I've given it to a lawyer to study for me. In the coming days, we may proceed to court because we believe that there have been fundamental breaches. I'm not interested in the issue of fraud. I'm interested in protecting ECG's assets. What are these flaws that you have identified you are looking at? Oh, they are with, I've, I've told you, I've given them to a lawyer. Uh, so give to, us an idea to, what you are looking at. To deal with what it. are these flaws? I think that the mode in which some of the changes were done were not proper. I also think that even the mode in which what changes the insurance... Are you to? There were 16 uh, conditions, President, that were changed. There were about 16. But the most important that has brought us here are two. Condition 24 and is it and 30, 31? 31. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you see, that's why I'm saying that don't just look at condition 24 and 31. Mm. If you resolve condition 24 and 31, and you still give it to a company that doesn't have the financial muscle and the technical capability to do that, you are running into a problem. Mm. It's a major issue so, for all so of what us. Is, what, is, what about the mode that you are contemplating a possible uh, Oh, no, let my lawyer advise action. you. Mm -hmm. I've, I've listened no, to what what, what What's the mode you are looking at? To go to court. Which you said is wrong. Oh, what? to say that there are real breaches. And that as a citizen, as an MP, I think that the court should look at it and give a ruling on that matter. That, and I'll, I'll do that. that also, that uh, a certain process should have been used to effect the changes which was not used. That is one. What, what, what are you thinking? That, what that, are you thinking ought to have been used? What is the vehicle, the you, process? You are, you are really, I, I can understand you are really pushing me Look, I have some documents in respect of even how monies were transferred into individual accounts. I think it breaches the whole process into individual accounts that were later wired to pay for this guarantee. I have serious issues with those e things. And I think that you ought to hold your government responsible. You see, a government's duty is to serve the interests of the people of Ghana. All of us cannot make decisions. That is why on the 7th of December... You didn't blow this whistle. It's the government. So what are you talking about? I blew Serving this the interest as far as April when I wrote to the president telling him that the guarantee was not proper. <laughs> telling the president that the guarantee was not proper. Telling the president that, look, um, 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 PDS did not have the financial capacity. So the government... Go and look the, at the, the government has taken action. On the floor and of he's parliament. And taking action. So how, how do you accuse it of... On the floor of parliament. Not serving the interest. That, look, you know what government is doing? It's closing the staples when the horses have bolted. That's not a fair. That's what government is doing. That is not fair. Why the couldn't government the determine table. the financial capability of PDS? It is not a fair comment. A whole government of Ghana, you cannot do due diligence on this company. When they presented the guarantee, why didn't government at least confirm the guarantee? So from you approach? don't believe FTI's uh, investigation report? Look, because FTI, they say that at at the, at the time when the suspicion is that the certain things ought to have been detected, it was not possible for anybody to come to a conclusion that there was any wrongdoing. No, no, read it very well. Look, uh, they are in two parts. Mm -hmm. I looked at it very well. I looked at it. And in any case, I'm not bound to agree to whatever mm. FTI says. I'm also, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm also. Excuse my language. You can read in between the yes, lines. Yes, yes, I can. I can also analyze. They, they have lawyers. Why? They, they have, have done. They have lawyers like you. They have lawyers. You are going to court. You have, 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 have a problem. I follow that. So what, what, what is this issue? You can't say that something. You can't get your own report. You see, we are growing a nation. We are developing a country. We must learn from some of these issues. That when you are going through such a process, and a company presents a guarantee, it is paper. You just don't take that on the surface of it. Especially, Samson, especially when ECG wrote. So why do you say that there was no cause for suspicion? How can you come to that conclusion? Mm. It's not fair. ECG wrote letters to the Minister of Finance. 
informing the minister that no hold on we have issues with the guarantee let's clear those issues the minister did not take their advice and went ahead to push for the guarantee to be accepted and so this issue is moot. And this was uh, an ECG board appointed mm. by the government, the current government. Under uh, Kelly, Kelly was exactly. Uh, exactly. Yes. So you realize that the government couldn't have been conspiring mm. against it. Could you, could you oh, allow what me are you talking finish? about? Yeah. Okay. So you realize that the government was so, negligent, so and the government deliberately mm. went along that path. The government was negligent and deliberately went along this path. Why did the vice president authorize that the LC? or the bank guarantee should be watered down to an insurance guarantee. What was his interest? Was he serving the interest of Ghana? Or he was serving the interest of PDS? You don't take note you don't take note of the reasons that, was, that were given for that. The reasons were that PDS could not secure the demand guarantees or letters of credit as per the requirements of the LAA, that's the agreement, lease agreement, mm -hmm. and the BSA, the Bond Supply, Supply Agreement, yes. from a bank because of three, three main challenges. Thank you. And that's the intervention of the Vice President, as they mentioned here. Thank you very so much. So why, why don't so you why not kill the that? three? What are the three? One is that PDS doesn't have the financial model. Is no, that the, not one? No, no. That's the, the first, the third the first one. is Read the third that, one. The first is that PURC delayed. There was a delay in approving the rate setting okay. guidelines and the initial rate that PDS was authorized to no, charge. I'm going to list the three. The delay in agreeing on the list of PPAs yes. um, made, mm -hmm. and PDS right. not having a certain level of capital required for the issuance of a cash back payment security. That is the point. The first two were critical, so they would be able to sell to Don't worry. Uh, is it I investors know, I or to get money? I understand is this that not the case? And I'll break this thread quickly because of time. Um, the first one is that PURC must come out with the uh, tariff uh, setting guidelines. Right. Let PURC do that. Get competent people to do that. And I have pushed, even when I was a minister, that PURC tariff setting guidelines should be made public. The point is that there was a delay. And you know that we're working with timelines, don't you? And that so, we're going to so, lose so, the $500 so, uh, million. Dollars. So the solution is to water down from a bank guarantee to an insurance guarantee. And bear in mind, we discussed here hmm. the cause of that delay. If you want us to go into because we've settled that matter, what occasioned the delay was from the government side, the government's decision to turn around things, that occasion, that delay, that's one. Two is that if it has to do with determining the amount of power you should sell to uh, uh, PDS, government should ensure that that is done. Three is that, look, and that is the critical point I keep hammering on. Mm. Is that PDS did not have the financial muzzle to get the 350. And getting the 350 was a precondition for selecting PDS. It was a precondition that in selecting PDS, you ought to satisfy yourself that PDS can raise that 350. After, after Clearly, examining all the documents and interviewing the persons involved, they come to the conclusion that we have not identified any information to suggest that either PDS, Carl Bank, Danwell, and or personnel from MIDA committed or conspired to commit fraud or other malfeasance in relation to the demand guarantees. You say Thank you it. disagree with this? Oh, no, no. And your basis I'm, I'm is not, what? I'm not going to uh, talk about disagreement. It's government that disagrees with this report. It is government that has written, and I've cited their letter, mm. disagreeing with this report. The very government that commissioned this report says that it disagrees with the report. <laughs> the very government that commissioned this report <laughs> is commissioned another investigative team an with another situation. report. Mm. So, Samson, I think the is bottom line is that... For no, why be, why be, you should take your time. Because, the know, because again, he's referring to letters, but he's not referring to the investigative report by government's delegation also. I'm the conclusion of government's delegation report is this. It has one conclusion. Is it? In, the light, in light of uh -huh. the findings from the visit to al uh -huh. in Doha, uh -huh. it is our respective view that there is no valid or Thank enforceable you. demand guarantee issued by al Qut in support of the LAA and BSA. Signed, Honorable Ambrose Derry, Minister for Interior, and Godfrey, Godfrey Yebo Adame, Deputy I'm Attorney if General. I'm a land, if I'm a land, so yes. that uh, I, I see the YB is... Yeah, it, so land in so one, minute, land. one minute. So clearly, there is some discrepancy between Ambrose Derry 
and Godfrey Dami's conclusion vis-a-vis -vis that of the FTI. There's a disagreement. It behoves on government to tell us what it believes the way forward is. It behoves on government because clearly we are caught between these two issues, both commissioned by government. Mm. Both commissioned by government. Mm. And something, mm -hmm. I want to assure you, <laughs> and I want to assure the people of Ghana, those of us on the minority side, we shall pursue this matter to its logical conclusion. Which is being pursued already. We shall okay. ensure. Thank you. Thank you. Just hold on. Just hold on. Thank you very much.